Today, our session is about busting out of service fatigue by taking a look at joy. When we're exhausted, there is little room for joy and everything is a slog. Can't you feel it? It's hard to find that proverbial silver lining anywhere. And being joyless deprives us of those energetic smiles and laughs that are supposed to make our customer, client, patient, and patron feel good. But what are the actionable steps, actionable steps that can bring you back joy that the service fatigue has robbed us from? Back when I started my speaking career over 26 years ago, my very first speech was called 20 Ideas That Can Change Your Life. And really what it was, I'm kind of embarrassed now, it was accumulation of great ideas from other people that I packaged together and didn't realize I need to give credit where credit was due. And that's how I first started. But what I noticed in giving that keynote speech is there was always people coming up to me afterwards with the same seeking They all were looking for happiness. They were looking for joy. They were looking for a secret weapon, a secret answer that would bring them the joy that they were looking for. I eventually had to repackage the speech because I wasn't really giving big advice that could change your life, even though that's what the title said. The single best thing we can do is deceptively simple. We create the joy. And by the way, if joy is not the appropriate sediment for your line of work, then feel free to swap it in for something more suitable, like satisfaction, gratitude, fulfillment. We have a wide range of people that registered for today's program. We have got a lot of eye care people, because that's my background, healthcare people, some municipalities. We have a library system that's registered and some travel all kinds of industries. And so you can imagine that the customer that is engaging with a travel agent a travel advisor is in a much different mindset need than someone who's experienced something with their health or with their eyesight. So joy may not be the quite the word that you're looking for on behalf of your uh, end user, but we have to have joy within ourselves to find the energy to deliver the level of service that is expected in our industry. I hope that makes sense. But joy isn't waiting around for us to discover it. Sometimes we have to make it happen for ourselves. Creating joy and happiness in life and work is, isn't just about mental health. It impacts our physical health too. Neurobiologists have found that it, found accumulating evidence that having a positive perspective can lower your cortisol levels and your systolic blood pressure. The, artifact, the articles are lengthy, but let's just sum it up to say that joy can improve your health. So how do we create this environment of joy? I believe that one of the ways is to bask in your successful outcomes. Let me explain what I mean. Many of you know I spent over two decades in healthcare, and one of the roles that I had for several years was that of an ophthalmic technician, and I was responsible for removing the patch the day after eye surgery, cleaning the area, and prepping it for the doctor's post-exam. This included checking vision, and there is nothing that compares to watching the patient, they would blink, they would focus, they blink and refocus. And then most of the time they can read all the way down to the 2020 line for the first time in years. They saw colors brighter than they'd seen them in years. And it was pure joy. In fact, I get a little choked up just thinking about it. I love what I do now for a career, but I gotta tell you the life altering moments, well, they're a little different from taking off the patch and witnessing joy in the moment. And that is what refilled my cup day after day. My energy would get tanked in that job the same way it does today in the job I have, but I was getting joy from the outcomes. I'm curious and and put this in the chat and I'm gonna come over and look in a second for the role that you have, for the industry, the profession that you're in, where is the outcome joy for you? What has to happen to you for your end user for you to feel joy, a spark of it in your job? Go ahead and put that in the chat for me, and I'm going to read those in just a second. See, with outcomes, it's less about you and it's more about them. You're more focused on gratitude and less about adversity. I think that that is a really important piece. My speaking colleague and dear friend, Marilyn Sherman, recently posted a quote on her social media channel that really caught my attention. And it said, quote, you can't walk in gratitude and sit in self-pity at the same time. It's worth a repeat. Ready? I'm going to repeat it. You can't walk in gratitude and sit in self-pity at the same time. 
Well, I was intrigued by that quote and she hadn't given credit to anybody for it. So I picked up the phone and called her and said, dude, do you make up that quote or did you get that from somebody famous? And she said, no, she had made it up and instructed me that we can take the word self-pity out and we can replace it with a lot of other words like anger, jealousy, envy. I thought that was an excellent thing. I want to talk about Marilyn one more second here before I move on because it's very timely. Marilyn, if you haven't ever heard of her, is a speaker who talks about making sure that you keep your bucket full and sitting in the front row of life. And she lives that by example. And right now, today, she has flown herself to France where she's put herself into an immersive French speaking class. It has been her lifelong dream to be fluent in French. She even married a Frenchman and she has spent over a year doing a self-directed online lesson kit of some kind. And now for three weeks, she's going to be in a class that is bringing her nothing but joy and maybe a little trepidation at being a student again, but I envy her because it's not possible for her to feel the gratitude of what she's doing right now and pride in herself and feel self-pity at the same time. So Marilyn, you're going to listen to this later on recording, and I say double thumbs up for sitting in your own front row. I'm really impressed. Of course, we need to acknowledge the fact that when things are tough and we start to lack hope about the environment around us, joy is one of the first things to go. So what can we actually do other than bask in the outcomes? Well, you guys know, especially those of you who've been loyal followers of this series, that I'm into the three action steps and the practical things you can do right away. So when you're exhausted and lacking joy and you want to have in your work, it can seem impossible to get back. So here's step number one. How do you find the joy? When in doubt, Google. Now, that isn't a joke. Just Google the phrase, simple ways to find joy in your life. Not right now. Do it later. Simple ways to find joy in your life, and you will find pages of suggestions that can remind us of what we already know but may have forgotten. Things like appreciating what you do have, surrounding yourself with positive people, laughing more, or creating a work yeehaw list of professional achievements that you're excited about. Dance party for one to start your day? Sure. Uh, writing with a colored pen instead of black or blue? Go for it. Now, you might think that these sound cliche or just silly suggestions, but I want you to ask yourself, are you doing any of them? Did you happen to register for this program because you are admitting that you or your team is lacking the level of joy that you need at home and at work, but yet you're not doing some of these simple acts that you might roll your eyes at and think, oh, brother, but maybe they can make a real difference. So your turn. Tell me in the chat what you are doing right now to bring joy to your day, and the more specific you are, the better. While you're populating that over there, I'm going to tell you some examples of things I have done that you won't find on that Google list. By the way, there is a door prize waiting for one lucky chatterbox today. So get over there and start playing. And I just feel the word joy when I say the word play. They go together for me. So while I wait for you to chime in, I want to tell you about how I recently created more joy in my world. I started taking pictures on my phone of good things I've done for myself over the last month. What do I mean by good for myself? Well, the first picture that I took was when I ate an apple at the airport while standing in front of the Golden Arches logo, my favorite restaurant while traveling, and I need to be stopping that. And so I bought the apple and I felt like I needed to prove to somebody that I was eating an apple in front of the Golden Arches. I was actually thinking about posting it and then changed my mind, but I took the picture and then later when I looked at it, I had joy that I had left that value meal number one exactly where it belonged on the other side of the counter. I took a picture of the time that I walked for 30 minutes in an empty gate area of a small airport so I could get my 30 minutes of movement per day checked off the box. It was the only way I could get it done. And there was great joy when I was finished. I took a picture of me sitting in front of the fire reading a new book that I just got for a quarter at the library sale when it was on my Amazon wish list for over 15 bucks. Score! See, now my next step to bring joy, and this may also sound stupid to you, but I'm admitting it, I'm going to print those pictures out and I'm going to collage them in a place where I can glance at it daily and smile. It cost me almost nothing to do this, and no one on the planet cares about this except for me. 
but it does a lot to build my internal strength and attitude, even when I'm facing a tough day. Here's what's interesting. My Facebook feed in the last week has been giving me all kinds of joy stuff. Now that's either Facebook algorithms, or maybe it's because Google Home is hearing me get ready for joy. But I was reminded of a, of a quote, and it's one of my favorites, and I, and I had forgotten about it, when Theodore Roosevelt said that comparison is the thief of joy. And that is so true. If you feel you're looking at everybody else and wondering why they have what they have and you don't, there's, it's very hard to find the joy, extremely hard. Um, all right, step number two. I want you to think about taking a retreat. Now, this can be for your team or just for you, whichever you need more right now. I've been advocating for and personally doing both kinds of these retreats for nearly 30 years on a regular basis. In fact, I love this concept so much, I wrote an entire book about it. It's called Wrapped in Stillness, a personal retreat guide. There's a few of you on the line who already have the book in your hand, but if you've never heard of it, I wanna tell you about it now. Not because I want you to go buy it. I don't care if you buy it. What I care about is that you buy into the concept and you use whatever resource you can to help you with a retreat. It's a guide to help you get away and get a plan and get back the joy. For me, the most enlightening moments always come when I realize that the things bothering me are actually more in my control than I realize. The key is to break it down, whatever you need to find joy. Now, I promised in the write-up that I'd give you my step-by-step -step retreat plan. It's also in the book, but I want to give it to you right now real quick. Here it is. Step number one is to create a retreat environment that pleases you the most. For me, it's outdoors with a view or inside with fireplace, hot tea, and some music. Some people love their garden. Others like a hotel room. Whatever environment creates the cocoon for you. Next up, you set your intention. What do you want to get out of the day? Do you want to unmuddle the mind or be specific about a goal? Um, for example, the most recent one I did, I wanted to decide how to change my calendar and allow me more time for the joy that I needed. I want you while on retreat to read and think and process, get books that are deep on the topic and self-reflection. That's why I wrote the book the way I did. It has short anecdote chapters followed by five to seven questions. And I wrote it like I'm your best friend on retreat with you who doesn't have the answers, but knows how to ask the tough questions. Your next step is to ask those tough questions and be honest with yourself and the answers because that's where the magic happens. I want you to create a realistic plan for action with achievable steps rather than a mountain to climb. And I want you to create a rit ritual at your retreat that brings you joy. I have to admit that the word ritual feels weird the first time you do it, the idea of it, but I promise it makes a difference. Try a retreat to find the joy. Finally, step number three is I want you to inventory your happy. Inventory your happy. Okay. You don't want to take a retreat, don't have time to take a retreat, no problem. There is one exercise in this book. I'm going to give it to you today without even having the book, just the exercise. And I want you to do, it's, it's called, what does happy look like? I'll briefly explain how I came about this. I met a woman one time when I was starting to figure something out, a big decision I had to make. Her name is Phyllis Dean. She currently lives in Oregon, state of Oregon. And she was the one who first gave me this exercise and she asked me to try it and see if there was an aha. And there certainly was. So this is the way the exercise works. You're going to start on day one with a piece of paper and a notebook, and you're going to write down off the top of your head without processing the things that bring you joy, the things that make you happy. And it can be the smallest thing, or it can be big things. Now, after you've done your list, I want you to turn the page so you can't see it and lay excuse me, lay the notebook down so that the next day when you come back, you get to do it again. Now, you're not trying to duplicate the list from the day before. You're just starting from the top again. And sometimes you're going to write down the same things. Other times you might add new things. You're going to do this five days in a row without ever looking back. On the sixth day, I want you to lay out all your lists and I want you to cross out all the duplications. For those who ever played categories, it's the same idea. Cross out all the duplications and you'll be left with a master list of things that bring you joy. And then ask yourself the nine questions. I'm not going to tell you what those questions are because you need to do the exercise first. But I'm going to put in the chat right now where you go to get the chapter. For those of you listening to the recording that cannot see the chat, I am putting it right now in the edits. 
There it is right there. You go to lauriegast.com forward slash bust out. And if you go to March 11th, the day of this recording, you'll see a tab there that says get chapter. When you click on it, it's going to send you to a blog that I did. And in that blog is your free chapter. There's something else there too, that I hope that you will take a look at. It is a song that was written for me by a country western singer and fellow speaker, Eric Dodge. It's called Wrapped in Stillness, specifically written and recorded to go with the book. I love the song, but here's what I did that brought me joy. It must have been a year, year and a half ago, I posted out to Facebook that I wanted to take this song and I wanted to match pictures with it, but it made no sense to go out to the world and play stock photo prices just to have pictures that didn't make sense to me. And so I put it out, not as a contest, but as an offering. Send me a picture of something that brings you joy. And that's what I match the pictures to. So every picture that you see in that short video is somebody's definition of joy. And I personally feel joy just when I watch the video because you can feel the emotion that's tied to every single one of those scenes. It wasn't about people, it was more about places. And you'll be able to feel that if you take the time to watch the video. For the rest of you, please be sure that you get that free chapter, watch the video, and remember that we take control of the joy. The joy has to happen in you first before you can lead others. And we have to help others find these moments of joy. So go ahead and take a moment to consider how you can bring joy back to your life and work. Consider all three steps that I shared today. Google some new ideas. They are plentiful out there. Don't wait for somebody else to knock on your door and hand you happy, hand you joy. They never come a knocking. You have to go find it. And if you don't like my ideas, there's hundreds more just waiting for you at your fingertips, literally. Step number two, take a retreat. And even if you can only spare an hour a week, make that be one hour that counts. If you can get a whole day away and really immerse yourself in that self-reflection and coming out of it, promising yourself to do things different, there's gotta be joy on the other end of that. And number three, do the exercise that's wrapped in stillness that's called, what does happy look like? And discover where you can really find happiness. So do you know what would make me really happy is hearing from you, whether you are on this program live or you're watching it recorded later, I'd love to have an email from you letting me know what an impact joy, changing your joy has had on your customer service delivery. You see, we're seeing enough interest in this service fatigue. Well, I think there's a book in the works and I'd like to continue to offer you the chance to be a part of that, to share the ideas so that it's not just my ideas, but from all of those people in the circle of influence that we have right here. If you're serious about busting out of service fatigue, it starts with restoring the joy that's costing you so much energy and attention. And you are the one who gets to seek, find, and put in place that which brings you joy.